on January 26th, 2020. Superstar NBA player Kobe Bryant recently retired at the age of 41, had taken up coaching his daughter Gianna's basketball team. Gianna was 13 years old. Kobe, Gianna, and seven others, including a pilot and Gianna's teammates and their parents, decided to take a helicopter to one of their basketball tournaments. It was a 67-mile trip. Would have been two hours in a car, but 30 to 40 minutes by air. Unfortunately, this day was a very foggy day. I remember this very vividly, how foggy it was outside. And unfortunately, the pilot seemed to have gotten discombobulated in the air. And instead of going up, he went down and all lives were lost that day. I've obtained the autopsy report and I'm going to go into what they found, sadly. But first, I was recently in Kobe's old stomping grounds of Lower Marion, just outside of Philadelphia. So I wanted to share his childhood home and then we'll talk about his sad demise. Here is the childhood home of Kobe Bryant, one of the greatest basketball players of all time, most competitive, <laughs> five rings, 20 years of playing. This was his high school home. His father was a professional basketball player. So when Kobe was three, the family moved from Philadelphia, basically where we are, to Italy to play basketball in Italy. So Kobe was basically raised in Italy until 1992 when it was time for him to go into high school. His father retired and the family moved here, bought this house and stayed here till 2008. So this is the house that Kobe would have lived in when he was playing high school at Lower Marion High School. He was definitely a standout star and when 1996 came around, he was gonna graduate high school. The season before, Kevin Garnett had been drafted as an 18 year old. So Kobe kind of wanted to do that. He wanted to forego college and go straight from high school to the NBA. Um, it had never been done by a guard before. Usually it's always much bigger guys, but Kobe wanted to do it. So he worked out with the Celtics and the Clippers because he wanted to be in a big market um, he didn't expect, I don't know if he knew where he was going to be drafted, but he was hoping to go in like the first five or so. But he had successful, you know, workouts with those teams, but he wanted to be a Laker and, um, or at least play in LA and that's where the Clippers were. So he, uh, his agent called over to Jerry West at the Lakers and asked to have him be able to work out. So Kobe worked out with a bunch of draft or potential draftees they were going to draft and Jerry West said this kid just stood out. He was by far the best player in the draft. He was young, but he said he was blowing everybody else away in every category. And he said, and finally, I had to test him. So I put one of my best defensive players, Michael Cooper, on him. And he said that was just embarrassing. I mean, he was like, <laughs> he was just blowing Michael Cooper out of the water, made him look like an old man. So... The Lakers wanted to draft him, but they didn't. They were kind of far down in the draft list. So the day of draft day, you know, Kobe had announced that he wanted to be drafted and he was entering the draft. And apparently the Nets wanted to sign him. But he told John Calipari, or at least his agent did, said, if you draft me, I'll go play in Italy. I don't want to play there. So they'd forego drafting him in the seventh spot. And then in the 13th spot, Charlotte, Charlotte Hornets actually drafted Kobe Bryant. And as you knew, you know, he wanted to play for LA. So the Hornets had to facilitate to the Lakers, which they ended up getting Vladi Divac, which was a pretty good trade because it gave them a really good player and it helped free up some of the money on the Lakers roster to eventually bring in Shaq, which was along with Phil Jackson and Kobe, that was a key piece to the Lakers success for all the 2000s. So this was the house he was drafted out of. His parents lived here 
until 2008 and then sold it. But what's crazy is when they sold it, it came with Kobe's basketball hoop that he used to use and practice on when he was going to Lower Marion. So definitely in the top 10 of all time. Some people might even put him in the top five. Guy had over 30,000 points. Yeah, when they, when they sold the house, his parents sold the house. And that's kind of a weird relationship too. The basketball hoop was right there in between those two doors. And whoever bought it in 2008 got that hoop along with it. Yeah, I say his, he and his parents had kind of a weird relationship because I had read online that when he started making money, he offered to buy his mom a new house and said he would pay $250,000 for it and she declined it. She wanted a house that was $450,000 instead. And apparently one of his championship rings, one of the five rings, he gave to his parents and they ended up selling it. And then I think he sued them to get the ring back and everything. So kind of crazy, but this was his childhood home in the United States from 92 to 96, from the time that he came back to go to high school and the time he was drafted, he lived here. And then when he was drafted by the Lakers, he ended up moving to the Pacific Palisades and would go to the high school there and practice all the time. So the guy was just immensely dedicated. Uh, it was crazy though, he finally retired and then right after his retirement was his tragic untimely death. It really would have been cool to see that hoop here, but Laker fans, Kobe Bryant fans and everything, I hope they like this. So now we're going to go through the investigators report and the autopsy report. And I want to thank Scott Michaels of Dearly Departed online for uh, providing me with this, this report. So I'll start with the County of Los Angeles Department of Coroners investigators narrative. This was uh, sourced by the aircraft accident investigation report by the National Transportation Safety Board. Their investigation uh, initially stated that Initial reports indicate that on January 26, 2020, at approximately 0945 hours, multiple witnesses called 911 reporting that a helicopter had crashed into the foothills of the Santa Monica Mountains above Las Virginas Road in the city of Calabasas. Deputies from the LA County Sheriff's Department and personnel from the LA County Fire Department responded to the scene. Now they found all nine people were dead upon arrival and since we're focusing primarily on kobe bean bryant i'll read their body examination of finding him at the scene it says the descendant is an adult male adult black male i observe lying on the ground just south of the main fuselage in the above described scene he was wearing black pants a sweater underwear and a shirt he has black hair, an unknown eye color, and natural teeth. Upon examination, I observed significant trauma to his head, right arm, and lower body. Now they did do an autopsy, and originally when they did it, he was done as a John Doe, and with his fingerprints, they were able to identify Kobe Bean Bryant as being the person in discussion they used his doj prints department of justice prints um, it initially said his weight was 178 pounds with an unknown eye color and unknown hair color but that there was evidence of a beard and mustache um, no teeth and that the body was found in poor condition the autopsy had found that this was a Blunt trauma accident. The time of death was January 26, 1010 AM. Investigator Christina McGuire made a synopsis saying the decedent was one of nine individuals involved in a helicopter crash on January 26th of a Sikorsky S76B that the decedent was riding in crashed into the mountain terrain the city of Calabasas. Weather conditions at the time of the collision were reported to be foggy. 
The helicopter appears to have crashed into a mountain before making a small skip and coming to rest near a hiking trail. The trail of the helicopter was located south of the main body of the helicopter. Various aircraft parts were strewn for approximately 100 yards north of the apparent main point of impact. The decedent was observed lying in the dirt to the immediate south of the main wreckage of the helicopter. The first thing mentioned is the toxicology report, which they say they find a methylphethanidate present, which is, from what I can understand, basically an ADHD prescription. Then it says decedent is a 41-year-old black male who was on a passenger and a commercial helicopter that crashed into the mountainside in the city of Calabasas. The evidence of injury, blunt trauma, and I'm going to provide the diagrams that they provided with the injuries as best as I can. It says blunt trauma of the head. Examination of the head reveals a flattened but generally intact face and scalp. There is a 6 by 5 inch laceration on the frontal scalp involving the right eye exposing the cranial vault. No brain matter is identified. The left eye is present and appears to be brown in color with congested hemorrhagic sclera. The left lower chin shows a 6 by 6 inch laceration exposing the tongue and multiple fractured segments of mandible. Those fragments contained intact teeth. So that would be his jaw. Examination of the ossoral aspect of the scalp reveals a six by four and a half inch laceration involving the mid to left aspect of the scalp. There's also a laceration noted to the right superior parietal scalp. The neck area is exposed showing a segment of the cervical spine. The hyoid bone and thyroid cartilage show multiple fractures. Then it moves on to blunt trauma of chest and abdomen. Examination of the skin reveals a large laceration involving the anterior neck, upward chest, and left shoulder area. So that would have been a pretty big laceration. The chest cavity is visible through this defect. A one and a half by one inch laceration is noted to the right lateral lower chest. The skin is torn below the pubic region and interiorly and extends circumferentially toward the back just superior to the buttocks. Both clavicles, the entire rib cage, pelvis, and lumbar and sacral spine show fractures. Blunt trauma of the extremities. The left arm is attached and contains multiple fractures of the humerus, radius, and ulna. Lacerations are noted to the axillary region and mid upper arm. Examination of the hand reveals a laceration to the palm aspect of the hand as well as dorsal aspect of the hand. There is avulsion of the fourth fingernail there is traumatic amputation of the right arm. Submitted separately is the right forearm. The dorsal aspects show a compound open fracture of the radius. The amputation site shows ragged skin and exposed muscle along with fragments of radius and ulna. Skin slippage is noted to the dorsal of the right hand. The ventral aspect shows a two and a half inch laceration at the base of his thumb. Multiple tattoos are identified from the ventral aspect of the forearm. Examination of the lower extremity shows complete disruption of anatomic structures resulting in a fragmentation of muscle, tendon, and skin. No feet are attached to the body. They are traumatically amputated above the ankle. Two feet present are present inside multicolored court shoes. They are identified by shoe size. An amorphous mass of soft tissue is identified via DNA analysis as belonging to Kobe Bean Bryant. Postmortem burns examination of the skin reveals extensive burning of the left temporal 
parietal scalp as well as right superior parietal scalp and right octodal scalp. The entire interior chest shows extensive burning as well as a segment of the left lateral arm and hand. Examination of the back reveals focal areas of extensive burned skin involving the right mid back and lower back. In aggregated amounts to approximately 30% total body surface area burns. The external examination, the body is identified by toe tags and is that of an unembalmed black male. The entirety of this body measures 65 inches, which obviously does not reflect the original height of the body. The total body weight is 178 pounds. There is a partial tattoo noted to the right upper arm, which is disrupted by the traumatic amputation and reveals what appears to be a segment of butterfly, which is part of a crown and radiating dark lines expanding from the crown. Examination of the right forearm shows multiple tattoos, which include the name Bianca. Below that is Bella. Below that is Gianna. Below that is the name Maria Anoro. Below that is the word Natalia. And below that is the word Diamante. Below that is a diamond. A mustache is noted to the upper lip. The left eye is brown and hemorrhagic. Lower teeth are present among the fractured mandible. Uh, evidence of therapeutic intervention, none. The body was not clothed, but I did examine the clothing and it consists of the following. Each shows tearing in the artifact and shows burn. A pair of underwear with elastic bands that raid Calvin Klein and the other is a pair of black pants with an elastic waist. It did say in the respiratory system, it said no soot is found in the upper respiratory or lower bronchial passages. A nearly intact left lung is identified, which weighs 330 grams. It says a fragmented liver is recovered. A single kidney, which has been fragmented into three separate parts, is collected. Representative sections of various organs are preserved in one storage jar. It says Photographs have been taken prior to and during the course of the autopsy. <sighs> and the opinion at the end by Juan Carrillo was, uh, it says the cause of death of this 41-year-old black male identified as Kobe Bean Bryant is due to blunt trauma. These injuries are rapidly, if not instantly, fatal. Thermal burns present on the head, chest, and extremities are post-mortem and did not contribute to his death. The manner of death is deemed an accident. Now, that is what they found, but flight investigators actually felt that this, um, you know, this was actually pilot error. They felt that the weather conditions in this circumstance should not have allowed the pilot to fly. He should have exercise better judgment in their opinion they felt that maybe the fact that Kobe Bryant was such a high profile client he didn't want to let him down he didn't want to cancel the trip helicopter had no terrain device to um, read the terrain because it wasn't required to and there was no black box on board so they believe that the pilot got disoriented um, from the altitudes he was flying below um, actually flying really low for a large amount of the flight. And, um, and then when he thought he was climbing, he actually was descending. So unfortunately that is the report on Kobe Bean Bryant. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.